Hey everyone, welcome to Open. I'm Rena Valentin, your host of Gaffer Colangia for the next hour, encouraging you to get social with us online. Tweet us and follow us on Instagram at Broxnet TV and uh, like us on Facebook at Open Broxnet Television. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Insta Stories, and LinkedIn at Rena Valentin. As the rollout for the COVID-19 vaccine continues throughout New York City, many people still face concerns about being vaccinated. So today, Montefiore Health System and Arbor Einstein College of Medicine Infectious Disease Specialist and Assistant Professor Dr. Eric Meyerowitz joins us to answer questions people may still have about the vaccine. Please welcome Dr. Eric Meyerowitz. Hello, doctor, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thanks for having me on, Rena. It's really good to be with you today. Yeah, well, it's really refreshing to have these conversations under different circumstances. We're on the Absolutely. road. Yes, and so um, I would assume that your, your busyness is now uh, really about making sure that these vaccinations get into people's arms. And um, our interests lie in a lot of the questions that people have in um, how safe and effective are these vaccines. Yeah, it's it's really, it's been an amazing journey from over the last year, and certainly it's much better to be where we are now than where we were a year ago. And I think you're exactly right. Every day, we're try, we're working with people to um, to talk to them about vaccines. And, and I think, you know, uh, and this is great that you're doing this segment now, because one of the things that I tell all my patients is it's very normal to have questions about the vaccines, and we should do, do what we can to get the right answers of them. Yeah, and then, you know, there's a lot of mixed messages. And because there is social media and because there is the internet, there's so much disinformation and misinformation that it, it really becomes very confusing. Um, you know, this rollout that's occurred and now that it's actually uh, now available to 16 and above, now that becomes a, an entirely different question because now we're talking about um, a group of individuals who are still growing in their own bodies. So, um, what are the, the biggest concerns that uh, people are, are presenting in the way it's being rolled out, right? Because first it was uh, age bracket, I think 16 and above, then 15 and above, then 30 and above, and then it went all the way down to 16. So why is that? Why was that a, such a big, that was a big leap. Right, right. So, so, um, so, so the way that they designed the, the rollout uh, with, with the COVID vaccines was to try to get them to the people who were at highest risk of dying from COVID first. And so the, the, it turns out that the, the biggest risk factor for, for having a severe outcome from COVID-19 by far is age. And, um, and so, so that, that was how they, they started when they designed this. They wanted to make sure that the people who were at highest risk of dying were going to get it first. And, and then as we've come, uh, as, as, we've, as we've advanced over the last few months, they've been able to expand the criteria. And I, I, as, you, as you see, many, many, uh, most, most people over 75 ha have been vaccinated now. Um, and and, and that's, that's why the, the, uh, the, the criteria is coming down. So the reason that it's stopping at 16 is because the current trials, the trials, uh, the, the, three, the three trials that led to the authorization, um, they were, uh, they, uh, they studied people uh, either 16 and above or, or 18 and above, depending on the trial. Um, yes. And so, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so that, that's where, that's where this is coming from. So, um, okay, so since we're talking about trials, let's talk about the different vaccinations, right? We have Moderna, we have Pfizer, and there's Johnson & Johnson. Whereas Moderna and Pfizer, you have to do two shots versus one shot with Johnson & Johnson. So there's this other question of like, okay, well, which is most effective? And how do we, I mean, some locations don't even allow you to decide which one you want. So how is that determined as well? Yeah, you, you know, so so um, earlier on there was much less supply, and so so uh, so people didn't really have the opportunity to to pick uh, which which uh, which formulation they were getting. I think you know as as supply is increasing, it's very likely that when you're signing up, you may be able to find a site that has a specific vaccine. Um, the, the most important thing uh, the, the the most important thing that I would take away from from all of the trials is that all three of the authorized mm -hmm. vaccines are. Uh, are a hundred percent effective at pre at preventing death from COVID nineteen. So death and hospitalization from COVID nineteen those are the most important outcomes uh, because we obviously want we want to keep people healthy. We want to keep people out of the hospital. We want to keep people uh, from 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 dying from from this 
from, from this terrible infection. And so all three vaccines do that equally well. What you, what you see in the, in the headlines um, that, that you might see reported in, in, in newspapers or, or, or on TV are slight differences in, the, in, in, in what was called the efficacy um, uh, uh, in terms of prevention of, of all symptomatic infection. Um, so you see differences from the high 70s to the low 90, 90, 90%. Um, and so, so, so what, what that means is that, uh, is that, is that w uh, when you compare uh, people who received the vaccine to people who did not receive the vaccine, um, they were, they, it, it, was, it was remarkable, in, in, in all three cases, it was, re, it was remarkably effective at preventing all, all symptomatic infection. And what we've learned as the, as the, as the vaccines have rolled out, they're also probably near, near equally effective at preventing asymptomatic infection. Um, so these small differences in the numbers that, that you see reported in the, in the trials are, are probably not clinically meaningful. Uh, they're all, all, three of the, all three of the vaccines are gonna keep you out of the hospital. They're gonna keep you from getting really sick from COVID. Um, and, 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 but, but, but they're not 100% effective. I see. So that's something we all need to take into consideration, right? So it's not, we're not 100% guaranteed. And then there's the question of like, how long does the vaccination even last once it's been injected into your body? That's right, right, and 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 that you know because these have only been you know the the, tri the trials with these were were largely started last summer, so we're going to be approaching on one year since the first people got these vaccines in the context of a trial. Um, so so in, in terms of very long term outcomes, we are going to have to we're going to have to wait and and see. Um, uh, but but there's been some really promising data in the last couple of weeks that has shown that uh, antibody antibody levels. Um, uh, 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 seem to persist at very high levels for six or seven months, um, and 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 many of us think that that's going to be uh, that that's going to continue to persist. And so I, I do think these these vaccines are going to to have uh, they're going to provide long term protection. Um, one of the questions that that frequently comes up is, will, are we going to need a booster at some point? And and there's just isn't enough information to know now. Right. So we're at that first stage. I get it. And so why do people still have to wear masks if they've been vaccinated? So, so that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a really great question that, that a lot of people have. So uh, one, one, one important thing is that uh, in the last couple of weeks, the CDC actually changed the guidance so that if you, if you are around a group of all vaccinated people you, and you're indoors, you actually don't need masks anymore. Um, and 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 that that makes a lot of sense because because we know that we know that these vaccines are so effective. Um, what the, the the rationale for keeping keeping the masks on when you're around unvaccinated people or when you're outside of the house um, in indoor settings when you're around people who you don't know if they're vaccinated is the rates of COVID-19 uh, circulating in the community are still really really high, and so the chances that you might be exposed to someone. Um, and and even even though the vaccines are 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 really really effective, that low that low chance that that you might have a breakthrough infect in, in, in a a breakthrough infection uh, from from someone when the when the community uh, rates are so high is is just is just um, is just kind of where, where we are now. I, I I I'm I'm certain that over the next several months, as the rates of infection drop in the community, we're we're gonna we're gonna be re revisiting this, and and the masks are are gonna come off. Absolutely. All right. So before we go, what is the percentage rate of protection? Right. You said it's not ninety nine. It's not a hundred percent. But what is the percentage that in which the vaccination protects you from it? Yeah. So 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 the vaccine the vaccines are essentially a hundred percent effective at keeping people out of the hospital and keeping people from uh, from from dying from COVID nineteen. That was shown right. in the trials, and and that's been shown in 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 real world settings as well. Um, the, in, in terms of prevention uh, 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 against all symptomatic infection, um, the, uh, the, 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 there is some data in the last couple of weeks uh, from, the, from the Pfizer vaccine, uh, so some data out of, out of Israel, which, which, has, uh, which has one of the most robust rapid uh, vaccination programs in the world. And they seem to be, uh, just like the trial showed, they were about 90% effective to, in, preventing, in preventing infection. They they seem to be about ninety percent effective at at preventing infection in in the real in the real world too, 
um, th they also they are also showing that uh, if you do get infected, uh, the amount of virus that you carry is uh, seems to be much lower than than the amount of virus that you would carry if you hadn't been vaccinated. So if you compare people who were vaccinated versus people who who, who were not vaccinated, that's important for for a couple of reasons. One is we we think that the amount of virus uh, uh, is related to how sick people get. So so uh, people who get sicker tend to have higher higher virus loads. Right. Uh, the, the second thing is if you have more virus, you're more likely to be able to transmit that and to spread that to someone else. So so this so this this suggests that that the um, that that the vaccines are going to help prevent transmission in at least two ways. Right. First first and most importantly, they are blocking cases. They're blocking you know, around 90% of all cases. And in that 10% of, of, of cases, which, which are, again, are gonna be, uh, they're, they're gonna be more, more of that sort of mild so, sort of cases, uh, the, the chance that, that, uh, of, of transmission to other people is, is gonna be much lower because of this lower, lower virus load. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. I, I think it, it, it makes a lot more sense now, at least to me. And thank you for taking the time to share that with our viewers. Uh, that was Dr. Eric Marowitz, infectious disease specialist and assistant professor of medicine, uh, Montefiore Health System and Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Oh my goodness, that was a lot, but uh, hopefully that helps uh, clear up matters for you guys as well. And also, if you're interested in obtaining more information on the vaccine and how you can get it, you can make an appointment for the COVID-19 vaccine by going to covid19.monofure.org. All right, we have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a pop-up event supporting small businesses. Don't go anywhere. 